Cool. Sounds serious. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I also wanted to um, also share that with the PGs that I have and the space I want to create is that there is no right or wrong question. You, if there's a question that you feel hesitant about because you're unsure if it will come off in a certain way or you're shy about it, I invite you to ask us or ask me. And I do acknowledge I don't know everything. So if there's something un, I'm unable to answer, there I may have an answer. Um, I may direct you to someone else or to another organization, or maybe we have something that you can also, maybe we can reflect on as a group. So I just wanted to clarify. So with the Q&A or the DMing, um, are we, are other people able to see their answers or just us? So I think the Q&A, no. Through the chat, I think you can choose if you would like um, to send it just privately to us or to everyone. Okay, great. And so to just, yeah, whatever works for you when it comes to that. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Was anything unclear or anything we could clarify before we kind of get into the rest of the webinar? Okay, perfect. Okay, let's get started. So I wanted to start in with a check-in. So the check-in, um, when building relationships within Indigenous communities, a check-in is really important, especially as facilitators, but also that part of that relationship building. So uh, you can feel free to put it in the chat box um, as we're going through the questions. But this is just a, um, this is a, this helps us to kind of feel how and feel what space you're in to feel what space you're in with us today. Um, yeah, so it kind of opens conversations, kind of gives me a feel of where you're at, and how I can also meet you halfway if needed. So, Melissa, how are you feeling today? We practice. <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I think I feel differently <laughs> half an hour later. Um, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I think I really like the owl. There's like new technology we're using, but it's a little new, so I'm feeling a little nervous uh, about that. But also just really grateful to be here. And I always like appreciate your energy and your vibe. And just like when you were laying everything out, I was like, yeah, this feels like reassuring. And this much felt really um, just a good moment to, to kind of come back to the present. Good. And how was your night yesterday? How was my night yesterday? It was really quiet. I think um, I didn't really do much. I watched a couple of like episodes of like a funny show and was Ooh. laughing out loud. So that felt Ooh. really good. Good. What about, I know you said that you're grateful for me being here, but two <laughs> other things you may be grateful for. <laughs> uh, three things I'm grateful for. Today, I'm feeling really grateful for the sun. It's just like so bright and warm. And I noticed like the spring is coming. So I really, um, I could feel that in my office. So feeling really um, grateful for that and feeling um, really grateful for my kids as much as like at times, you know, it can be challenging, just like the energy they bring to me and like how much I learn from them. I think I'm feeling really grateful for that. Well, thank you. So I'm feeling a lot better than I did 30 minutes ago. I was feeling a little anxious as we're starting the webinar or beforehand because we were having some technical difficulties. And I like to plan ahead. So just having that kind of hiccup kind of made me a little bit nervous. Um, my night yesterday was pretty relaxing. There's some things going on within my household, but you know, we got to take as matriarchs, we got to take care of that. And three things that I'm grateful for. So I'm grateful just for, again, like the weather, the sun, echoing what you said there. Also, my fur babies, I'm sure all of you have, or maybe some of you have some fur babies, dogs, cats, weasels, weevils um, that you're grateful for. I definitely am um, because the love I have for them and the love that they give me is very unconditional. And a third thing is for my little big brother, as I shared before, other groups I've been in is that he's a really good support system for me, someone I'm able to debrief my day with and something I look forward to when I get home. Um, so these questions, again, are just so we can start to get to know each other, um, start to figure out like how we can kind of mesh together and also just like setting the tone for the room. So we did have someone, I think, share. Yeah, and and feel free if you want to check in. That's wonderful. If you don't, that's also wonderful. Like whatever works for you. Um, but someone shared um, that they're grateful to be here, 
Um, last night was hard, but feeling grateful for spring. Um, my kids and my body. Thank you. Good, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for that. And I know another thing I'm grateful for. Sorry, yes. as we started talking <laughs> about things I'm grateful for, I'm like, wait, I listened to this podcast this morning and it was about like um women who are comedians and they're like comedic writers and they're like and it was so funny and just to hear them laughing together in the podcast so as I was laughing I was like yeah that's the other thing I'm grateful for yeah, that's what we're talking about today humor another webinar idea um yeah. teaching of laughter and humor but anyways that's for another day yeah anyone else want to check in feel free to do that like in the Q&A or the chat Give it like one minute if anyone would like typing. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, chat is okay. I'm gonna try to see if I can do the chat thing. If if you can just share through the Q and A, then sorry about that. But it sounds like the chat is not maybe able right now. Um, so someone mentioned feeling grateful for spring, friendship, and puddles. Very good. I agree. Puddles. My dog loves them. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> That's the clean of the mess after. <sighs> okay. Well, reflect on these questions throughout the day. When we start to think about things that we're grateful for, it kind of rewires our brain in the direction of the things that kind of light up with, within our system in our brain. Like uh, when we start to think a little bit more positively, we start to um, take moments to be grateful for the things that otherwise we might have been overshadowed by some of the things that might be difficult, that might have been difficult for us. Um, and as we, if we do these kind of positive affirmations each day, we'll start to see a different kind of positive outlook on future possibilities, but also just um, the energy you put into the world is the energy that um, comes back to you. So when we start to rewire our brain and think a little bit more positively um, each day, taking a little bit of time, we'll start to see a little bit of changes. Um, and also just like checking yourself, how are you feeling here today? That is just being, building that, uh, that skill of being self-aware. That's a skill that definitely needs to, is a skill that is learned. And I think it's so important as we continue and move forward in our healing journeys. And just asking yourself, how was your day yesterday? Like for me, that's also just getting to know where you're at, like I shared, but also reflecting on what you did yesterday. Did I take time to love myself? Did I take time to give love? Did I take time to nourish my body? Did I take time to care for someone or something? That was kind of like questions that I start to reflect on as I see these up here on the screen. Yeah. Did you want to speak to a little bit of that? The purpose of the questions we want to bring. It was just like interesting to, I think there's always like a balance and like sometimes the balance is different. Um, but as soon as I started thinking of things I was grateful for, I realized it was like something to connect on to. And sometimes um, it can be, or feel like a little um, easier to connect on the more challenging moments, but I think also giving space to connect on mm -hmm. yeah, gratefulness and other things. In life. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple people shared so someone said they're grateful to be here the chat is disabled so I apologize for that um, someone else said feeling good a little tired night was restful and I'm grateful for the day life and community beautiful all beautiful thank you okay thank you for those thanks for not like, leaving us hanging <laughs> <laughs> You know the awkward silence when you're in a group and no one answers? <laughs> we feel that in the webinar. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with the bundle teachings. So a lot of what I'm sharing here is something that I felt as common knowledge, but I realized over time and the teachings as the years went, go, went by less, I realized we don't know what we don't know. And a lot of what I think is common knowledge, some people may, this might be the first introduction to it. So I'm gonna start off with kind of just what I have here. Also just some of my teachings around the bundle. So one of the questions, of course, like what is a bundle? So a bundle for me is um, 
sacred items that are either found or gifted to you that kind of help with your personal development, but also just like that sacred journey you're taking as we move forward in this life and then until we meet our relatives. Um, it's a collection of items, sacred items, things that you deem um, important for you as you continue. Um, and a bundle doesn't have to be physical items. For me, there's like two sides to it. There's our physical and then our spiritual and emotional and mental part. So the physical here, what I have is I have this tin, which I picked up from a thrift store a long time ago, but it really resonated with me just because of all the, the space stuff on it, like the sun and the moon and the stars. Because for me, with my teachings is that we're connected to the star people. So that really resonated with me. And I like tin because... Um, it's something that my community has been using for years and years and years, just with like cups or jingles and anything in between. So um, our bundles start off with items itself physically, but when we are brought into the world, that's actually when the bundle starts. So we have our spirit name and we have our clan. There's times in our life where we're able to get our spirit name. Sometimes when right when we're when we're brought into the world, but sometimes it might take a few years down the road because maybe you haven't had the opportunity. Um, um, and then your clan as well. You're born into a clan. With my teachings, we kind of take our mother's clan. So with my mom, she was wolf clan. And that's something that I took on. But then as I'm moving forward, growing up in the system, one of the families I stayed in the longest, uh, they adopted me into the Sturgeon clan. So I identify with both. Sturgeon is a very intelligent fish. They go for they go deep in the depths of water. So I feel like that's something that I kind of resonate that kind of resonates with me because as I move forward in life, I like to challenge and dive deep and figure out what the different layers that um of the systems around me, but also the wolf because that humility. Because again, with the smudge that I shared with Melissa, I did not feel like I should smudge myself first. I needed someone else to kind of just take it, and then I'm okay with being the last one. Um, I find anyways, um, <clears throat> there's other teachings. If you don't have your spirit name or clan yet, that's totally fine. You're more than welcome to start off your physical bundle with things that you find that are, that resonate with you. Um, so I guess I'll share a little bit of what I have here before we get started. So I have my drum and my rattle. So these were gifted to me a long time ago, a good five years ago, I believe now. Well, this, this is not usually what I bring out in part of my bundle because they're a little bit heavier to carry. And I just wanted to make sure that the energy they take around them is positive. So I don't really bring them out um, too often. I also have a safe space at home where I store all my cultural items. But that's my little rattle. It's really cool when you bring it to a sweat or in a dark room. When you start to change it, you see sparks. I think they call them like thunder thunderstones. And then my big drum here. So this is super important to me. This is my first drum and my first rattle that I was ever gifted. They were made specifically for me. And so as we before we started the webinar, I was actually playing a little bit of a song earlier. It sounds a little bit different compared to what other people bundle. I mean drums sound like mine, I feel like kind of has like a bass. That, that ring. I really appreciate it. I wanted to share a piece of that. And here with my tin, as I shared before, I have a few medicines. I have some wike, some bear root, which is a little bit more of a sweet scent, which is good for anything chest related. I have cedar. Some of you might be familiar with this one uh, more than the bear root. This is a from a tree. You burn it, you can make tea. I have two braids of sweet grass. And all these medicines also have their own teachings as well. I have my little bit of sage. So the sage again was gifted. The bag I just found that it was pretty. I have my tobacco. I personally do not smoke the pipe, but I carry my tobacco for offerings or if I want to give an offer to someone. So usually I'm gifted these and I do like other teachings within the community, do work within the community, but I save them and then I get them after. And some of the stones, I don't know how well you can see these, but I have various stones. I have like a dragon egg, amethyst, a quartz. 
I don't know which one this one is, but it's cool. My little shells. And then my big shell here, which I got down for sure down in, in Colombia when I was down there in the ocean. Thank you. Right like a jawbreaker. And so our bundles, oh, oh yeah, I guess what I was smudging with, my feather here, my eagle feather. This was gifted to me by one of my relatives. He told me to use it when I speak. So I like to bring it out with me to start off a smudge, but also have it near when I am doing work within the community or I'm asked to speak. And the feather again, all of these have like probably different, all of these have different teachings. The feather as well, just the shape of it, the way it looks has its own teachings. So again, as we walk through life, we see this feather here. There's some feathers, you'll see a little bit of imperfections here and there. You'll see some parts that are frayed. You usually fix them by doing like putting your fingers on them, but then the top here. So the shape of the feather is really humbling because it acknowledges the life that we walk and acknowledges that the, way, the life that we walk is not linear. There may be a little phrase here, there may be different paths that we take, but in the end, we're all going in the same direction. Being with our relatives one day. Then I have the colors here, which were also gifted with me, gifted to me by my relative. He attached them before he mailed me. They're really important because they almost match my colors that came with my spirit name, which are the colors of the sunrise. Oh, I guess I didn't really formally introduce myself, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. I got, I, told, I got too excited, everyone. So my name is Brittany Grisdale. That's my English name. Um, my spirit name is Ni Mukise. I mean, Mukise Gijisque, which is Rising Sun. And for a long time, it took me a while to love because I was surrounded by family members that had like Sparkling Ego or War Borealis Woman and stuff like that. And I felt like my name, Rise, um, Rising Sun Woman was something that I was like, oh, that's not as fun or as powerful. But over time, I started realizing that you can't start a day without a sunrise. And the sunrise is the first thing that touches everything. Oh, wait. Um, uh, we start the day off. Um, yeah, so I think that my name now has a little bit more significance in what I do within the community. Like, I think I like to bring a spirit or a, a fun, loving, bright, warm spirit to the work that I do. And so this is my bundle here. And as I continue my journey, I will continuously add and take out. Because, because like what I mentioned before, our bundle is meant for us to help in our personal development, to help us with with our with our life in different ways. So it could be like smudging, it could be drinking of medicines, it could be just um, whatever we see fit for it, but it's something that's for us. Even though our bundles are for us, one of the teachings that also that came to me is that we do not own the bundle. This is the bundle that I have. It is for me, but it's something that I share with everyone. So with me, I believe that I don't have the authority to um, say what people have access to in terms of medicine, to see what people have access to in terms of sacred items. So if people want to need part of my bundle, that's something I'm happy to do an offer for or an exchange for, or also share little bits and pieces. Like my medicines here, my bare root and my cedar, they were full before. Even my little sage bag were, was pretty full before, but as I came across people in my life, People just needed them. And I was like, you know, the energy you put into the world is what you will receive. Um, does anyone have any questions with my bundle or any questions about starting your own bundle? Yeah, how do you know? Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, no. good question. <laughs> how do you know what goes in your bundle? So for a long time, I felt that I was very undeserving of a bundle. For me, because of the history of colonization and the effects of colonization and intergenerational trauma, I felt like I wasn't allowed to have one. I felt that I am not Indigenous enough. I felt that I am not connected with my culture enough or my identity as an Indigenous woman. I don't deserve one. But what came to me over time was that once people started gifting me things, I kept them. I kept them in a tin like this. This is the first thing that I started keeping my medicines in and my stones in. I never actually really thought of it as my own bundle mm -hmm. until someone said, that's your bundle. You, that's the bundle that you have and that you that you started. And for me, in that moment, it brought me so much joy because I realized 
I am deserving of a bundle. I am deserving of that love and the sacred items and their energy that come with it. It just took me a long time to really figure out that I was allowed to have one. And you can start it off with something small. So one of the things I wanted to do with some of you that are joining us online is um, take a look around your space. Could be in the office, could be at home, could be anywhere in between. And something that resonates with you, something that speaks to you, you can take it to start your bundle. It could be a stone, it could be a feather, it could be a bead, it could be really kind of anything you want to put in it. Like people put in copper cups in it, people put utensils, um, as long as they have some significance to your, your personal development and the sacredness that you hold, sacred, sacred, the sacred power that you hold. I hope that kind of answers your question. Like, how do you start? I think everyone's allowed to have a bundle. I think that if it's not a bundle, it could be like a care bag. It could be, what do you put in your backpack? What do you have around you that you use to, to support your journey as we move forward? And as the pictures there, we have little feathers because acknowledging that it may not be a bundle like we see here. It can take many forms for different cultures, for different people, for different communities. And reflecting on the space around you or the people and your family and your community, what do your bundles look like to you? What do they, what have you seen in, in your community, in your space? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? Does anyone in the webinar have any questions? I feel like I have a couple more, but I can also see if that comes up. I know we did the care, like creating a care bag last month. Mm. Um, yeah, and I guess it's like hard to know. Yeah, like really how to do this in a way, like as a settler and I think talking about the land and everything, like how to do this in a way um, that is like culturally sensitive or like, keeps that like um kind of just that like lens in mind mm -hmm. doing this so yeah I'm just like curious is it like you buy items like you kind of just make mm -hmm. what you want is this like should these be things that are gifted to you like how does that work so as an urban Nietzsche we say Nietzsche as a term as like a slang, I mean, it means friend, but I say it as a way to like say indigenous and the Niji, but as an urbanized indigenous person, um, I have to do what I have to do sometimes. Sometimes that means purchasing items. Sometimes that means um, trading or going to the store and finding something that I need for my bundle, like particularly medicines because I'm in an urban setting and I don't have access to a vehicle to go out to the to the res, to the country, to the fields to go pick medicines as often as I want to. And my teaching is you got to use the tools that you have a, available to you. And I think that is a process of uncolonizing because that whole system, uh, that whole process of colonization meant to, to disconnect us from the stuff, from our sacred ways, from our ceremonies. But when we take the initiative to break those cycles and to go out and find what we need, whereas it could be at the store or um, in an urban space, then we are taking back that power. And sometimes we gotta do what we gotta do. We do have different teachings though that also say it needs to be items that are gifted to you and that's okay. If that's something that resonates with you, I'm totally fine with that. I also believe that um, teachings are not a one fit all kind of deal. It's kind of what you take and put into your own like emotional, spiritual, uh, mental bundle. So that's another aspect I wanted to talk about was like, we have the physical bundle here, but what is in my bundle, my physical, I mean, with my mental, spiritual, and emotion, emotional part. Um, so yeah, I think you can go out and find what you need. I think lavender was something that I most recently bought just because it's really hard to definitely find out, out find that out in um, the city here in Winnipeg. Yeah, and I think as, I think one of the questions that came up before was like, um, do, I, as a non indigenous person, able to carry a bundle. And I think when I was asked that, it kind of came up around, what are your intentions? What are your intentions when you want to start a physical bundle? I think that sets the, sets the difference between 
the, the negative and the positive. So if your intentions are to start in, in a good way to connect and also support those around you, I am totally in support of that. If you are working with Indigenous people, maybe it's something that you can also offer tobacco for to get more teachings on. So I am I am limited with what I know. Just because I don't know what I don't know either, you'll get different teachings from different people. Yeah. Hope that helps answer your question. Mm -hmm. Good. Can I ask you a question about things in your bundle? Or not? Yeah, of okay. course. <gasps> what is this thing? This one? Be, yeah, like, so this one here, I brought, this was gifted to me by an elder, Vern Dano. He's a really cool person in, in the community, very active. I've been to a few of his sweat lodges, but it's just a, a piece for my feather to care oh. for it. So I just put it in and just carried it. But I just like having it and having my feather rest on it for the most part. But I also just like to display because it is, even though it's just a vessel for my my eagle feather, it's still very important because it does have a job. All of these have a job. Any other questions about my business? I'm more than happy to share. Um, like the week I like yeah. It's, it's okay, so yeah. So this week I actually brought to the staff today earlier this morning. Though some of us are getting over colds ailments, illnesses. So I put it in fabric. So one of the, I guess a part of a bundle teaching that I have is that you want to try to use items that are natural or vessels that are natural. So I have glass, I have fabric, we have copper. So this VK, I wish I, everyone could see it, but this is a root. It has many names. One of the other names I know it as is muskrat. Roots. So this is something that grows very, very long and you dry it out and it has medicinal properties. So when someone's sick around me, I often offer a piece just because it's really good to boost your immune system and just really good for anything chest related. I really do feel a lot of our medicines are really good for this area, our lungs, our hearts, our lymph nodes, and everything in between. Because once you take care of your core, everything else will be taken care of. So we're taking care of our own bundle within ourselves by taking in these medicines. And that's why I feel like a lot of our medicines take care of this area in particular. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I'm always happy to share when people um, express certain things to me, like they're not feeling good emotionally or they're afraid or they're fearful or they're sick or they're sad. There's different medicines I bring up. So for the cedar, for example, I love cedar because it's a medicine that is for protection, but also courage. So when I was gifted these moccasins, you can't really see them. I'm wearing, see them. I'm wearing them right now, but I was actually really gifted them from you. I put cedar in the moccasins because I want to make sure that every step that I take is protected and brings me courage and strength as I move forward. And that's something that you can do as well. I even sprinkle cedar under my doormat at home just to make sure to protect my doorways or whoever comes into my home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on that? Or have you, any of you started your own bundles or have a bundle? I realized as we were like talking about this, I guess like through the week. Yeah, because I feel like um, kind of some hesitance to be, like I have that, I have a care bag that sits on my desk and like I take it with me. Um, but like, yeah, it's hard to come and like, it's still something I feel like I work on or like work towards. But yesterday, um, the moon was out and I have this book. It's like Asha Frost, it's about the moon. And then in there was like a teaching around deer medicine. And um, it reminded me that I have this like earring that broke, but it was these antler earrings, these deer antler mm. earrings that someone gave me. Um, and how I like always keep that in that, I guess, um, like that care bag. Uh, and the teaching around it was like unconditional love. And I feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. It made me think of that anyways, when you were like talking about this this week, like, why did that come to like why did I decide to put it in there or what was like the journey of like bringing that into the mm -hmm. so yeah I, I am a firm believer in like everything happens for a uh, reason and things come across your path for a learning opportunity or an unlearning opportunity so sometimes 
it might take time for us to kind of get the idea or the picture of the, the, the teaching that comes with it. But yeah, I think that's really beautiful. I like the journey idea too. So like maybe you have more understanding as you go along. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I, definitely like that. Mm -hmm. I believe in that. Does anyone, oops, sorry. Yeah, oh, does no. anyone have any questions or anything they want to add? Anything they would like clarification around? And if not, so I guess the next part I wanted to kind of talk about is like, you have your bundle, now what? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so you have your bundle, it can be something very small. It can be a stone, it can be a crystal, it could be a feather, it could be a bead, anything in between, but you start off with something and you it's your bundle. So how do you honor your bundle and why should you honor your bundle? So honoring our bundle is just giving thanks to the ancestors and spirits that had these items cross our path. Giving thanks to them for giving these things items and letting them, letting us use them within our bundles and with our care banks. So how do you honor it? Do you want to take a guess? No. Oh. <laughs> Anyone in the chat box? There's no right or wrong answer. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> mm. We've done it in the past here. That's like amazing. offering to like the trees and stuff like that? I don't know. Yeah, totally. That's a big part of it. Yeah. Um, there's different ways you can honor it. So one of the things that came to me with um, with my teachings is that you honor your bundle through feast. So when you have a feast mm -hmm. in either spring or fall, those are other teachings as well because they're very significant seasons, but you want to honor your bundle by feeding them. And so feeding them, not actually feeding them, but feeding the ancestors and spirits and energy that come with all your items. So when you have your feast before anyone eats, you want to grab a little piece, a little piece of food from everything. It could be a little drop of coffee. It could be a piece of fruit. It could be a berry. It could be a crumb of a bread. It could be a sliver of meat. It may look really small, but in the spirit world, once you offer it, it becomes a hundredfold, thousandfold. So it's able to feed all those ancestors and spirits. So that is one way to honor your bundle is to feast it, which actually is a really good reminder because I don't think I brought my I brought my bundle around, but I haven't really talked to it yet or have honored it yet this year. And that's something that I definitely need to do as spring is coming. Mm -hmm. So the next time or another teaching is that you can just do it the next ceremony. I have seen people feast their bundle every ceremony and that's still beautiful. That's still OK. Um, sometimes I do see people splashing water on their drum and feeding it through them this way, and also the rattle. So there's different ways. But once you do that offering, you take that little plate of food, you wanna offer it somewhere where there's not too much foot traffic, where it's relatively clean, and you just wanna place the food there with a little bit of tobacco. So tobacco, again, if some of you don't know, is an offering. It's that connection to creator. So if I want to ring a ding creator, I'm going to take some tobacco, put it down and call 1-800. Just kidding. <laughs> I want to put it down beside the food and offer my little prayer. Doesn't actually have to be a prayer. It could just be a little like your, your intentions. Be like, hi, creator. <laughs> I am I'm offering this food to answer system spirits. And you want to thank Thank them and show that gratitude as well. I think that gratitude part is also kind of comes full circle. So we're thinking of gratitude for ourselves, but also giving the gratitude those for those around us that show show support. Um, that makes me think of like the name you were like giving as well. Yeah. So again, feasting your name, feasting your clan, and you really want to think of your bundle as like an extension of yourself as part of your being as, as as if it's your arm as if it's your heart as if it's your legs because again as what my body does for me my bundle also does for me it gives me the energy that support and just those humbling reminders that I am connected to the creator to a higher power and I think that is something that I often need to remind myself and that's okay um, I also want to acknowledge that we're all human and that if there's questions or uncertainties, feel free to ask. I think people will have our contact info through the center, through the link. We'll send like a feedback form. And oh, okay, yeah. So if there's anything, like, anything that comes up after, 
feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Maybe you're in a certain area and I don't have an answer. Maybe I know someone in the community there, or maybe I know someone who knows someone who knows someone in the community. And that's kind of like, maybe that's a way that we can support mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. So this is my bundle and some of the teachings that come with it. I feel this is not, these are not the only teachings that come with the bundle. I do want to emphasize to go ask for, go ask and go searching for more answers and more, more questions will come up. But um, take what you need from these teachings, take what fits within for you. And yeah, I think that's, that's okay. If none of it does, I'm totally done with that too. Not offended. <laughs> okay. I think I was trying to share the screen. Sorry, one sec. Just gonna make sure. Um, let me try again. Sorry. How is of technical difficulties? <laughs> no, no, it's not. Hmm. I'll try again. I feel like this, I really like that hole, but it's a little bit not used to the different one. That's okay. Okay. I think it's coming up. I don't think anyone can see it though. Okay. Well. People can see it? I think so. Okay, great. Perfect. I hope. Can people see the screen? Does anyone mind sending us a little confirmation? Yeah. I think um, we were maybe just going to give oh, yes. a moment. We wanted to give a moment for people to kind of take a moment, uh, give a moment, take a moment to reflect on some of what I shared. But also take that opportunity to look around your space again or reflect on what you have in your space if you're not in a space right now that has a lot um, of what you might want to start with your bundle or ways that you might want to honor your bundle or things that you may need in your bundle or want to find for your bundle. Mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, in the moment, I maybe mean, just, yeah, mm -hmm. some time for yourself. Yeah, so we'll take maybe two minutes. Sure, a couple minutes. Yeah. Two minutes, maybe. Two minutes. So if you just want to, if you don't, if you're not in a space to look around for something to start your bundle, what you can do is maybe we can take some time to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. We do this about three times. Relax your shoulders, the tightness you feel in your core. Relax that. Straighten your neck. Think about what you have in your bundle, what you want to add to your bundle. How would you honor it? If it's not a bundle, it could be a care bag, be a backpack, could be a space that you have in your home where you have items that are sacred to you. Relax your legs, your arms. And if you want to share it in with us with the Q&A, 
If anything you might want to share, there's some feelings that come up, some ideas, some starts. For the last two minutes. Groovy. Okay. So, is there anything that anyone would like to share? How are you feeling? Yeah, it was funny. I was like thinking of like, um, I think the winter is like a harder thing for me to go walking and stuff like that. But I, as I closed my eyes, I was thinking of like, yeah, just like taking a walk and around some trees and like what would maybe <clears throat> I noticed or like what would um yeah kind of like speak to me if I did that in a really intentional way. So I think just like kind of reflecting on you talking about intention and what that would mean for me in building a bundle. Mm -hmm. I think you have already built your started your bundle. I see you sit yeah. up in your office. <laughs> yeah. You honor that with the water. So after this teaching here, we're also going to take this water and offer it outside. This itself is also an offering and honoring way to, I guess, honor the session because that water takes in our energy, takes in our words, has memories. And so when we offer it back out. We're doing it in a good way. Yeah. Okay. Any questions before we like wrap up? Anything anyone wants to share with the group? Anything you noticed in reflecting a bit on what um, you think you might want or feel like adding to your bundle or yeah, anything anyone wanted to share? I guess for myself, just doing kind of like sharing a bundle teaching through this way in a webinar format was definitely a learning experience. So if there's other things that you might want us to kind of try out through a webinar format, send us a message, include it in their mm -hmm. survey. If there's other teachings that you're curious about, again, for me, there's no right or wrong answer, no silly answer. Um, I wanted to just reiterate that and share that I was in spaces before where I felt like I was guilted or ashamed or felt I was, um, that I was wrong for asking questions, but you don't know what you don't know, right? And I like to do things or the navigate the work of the community in a kind of gentle way. I hope it comes up as that. I felt that. Good. Thank you. Okay. All right. I think. Yeah, with that, sneak wedge. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you much, Brittany. Thank you so much for doing this today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to meet with us today. I appreciate your patience and just hanging out. Awesome. They said you both bring such lovely and warm energy. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And once again, if, if after we end today, if you know, you reflect more today or in the next few days, and there's a question that comes to you, feel free to connect with, with either of us. Thanks for being here. Ruby, take, take care. care. Take care.